you don't have a clue? Do you want to get a clue? In this Ada box, we will give you a clue. The Adafruit Clue. The Clue is a sensor-packed development board with a small, colorful screen and a lot of sensors. To make it compatible with existing projects, we made it the same shape and size as the BBC micro bit and with the same edge connector on the bottom with five big pads so it will fit into your existing robot kit or bit add-on. Each clue comes with a Nordic NRF52840 Bluetooth microcontroller, two buttons, 1.3 inch 240 by 240 color TFT, temperature, humidity and barometric pressure, triple axis accelerometer, gyroscope and magnetometer, proximity, light, color, gesture sensor, microphone, and a buzzer. Everything you need to learn how to interact and analyze the world around you. Have you been eagerly awaiting your Ada box for a while? It has arrived! Thank you to everyone around the world who has been patient as this box made its way to you. There's no better time to get an Ada box with lots of fun electronic projects you can build at home by yourself or with family. Thank you from the entire Adafruit team here in New York City. A huge thank you to DigiKey for going above and beyond to help support Adafruit over the last few months. DigiKey's support made this box possible. And we are so excited to see what you build. Adabox 15. Hello and welcome to the Adabox 15 unboxing. I'm John Park. First of all, we at Adafruit would like to extend a huge thank you for your patience in waiting for this Adabox to arrive. If you're a subscriber, we hope you've received your Adabox in the mail by now, and if you've resisted the temptation to sneak a peek inside, then you can join along as we unbox this together. If you're not a subscriber, then you can go and subscribe right now so that you'll get Adabox 16 as soon as it arrives. We'd also like to thank DigiKey for making this Adabox possible. Now, on to Adabox 15, which is all about the Adafruit Clue. We have this lovely Detective Clue themed add-in sheet. And this goes ahead and describes what you'll get in the box. Uh, and it also has a coupon code that you can use for a discount, as well as a bunch of links to the guide and other information for using the contents of the box. All right, let's go ahead and lay out the contents and then take a look at what all these exciting pieces and parts are, as well as how you'll be able to use them in projects. Now that we've got the parts laid out, let's have a look at what these things are. I'm gonna start with the clue. This microcontroller board here is our main feature for Adabox 15. This is a microcontroller board with a whole ton of sensors, a color screen. We have the familiar micro bit form factor so you can reuse a bunch of accessories and other projects with it. You can code it in Arduino and CircuitPython. And not only do we have the screen, buttons, touch sensors, but we have a barometric and altitude pressure sensor. We have accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer for nine degree of freedom motion sensing. There's even a Bluetooth LE wireless connectivity built in thanks to the NRF52840 microcontroller right on board. And it also has USB connectivity for power and data, as well as a battery connector for powering it up in remote projects. To go along with our clue board, we also have 
a three AAA battery pack and alkaline batteries to go along with that. You can plug that in and power it. And the nice thing is this battery pack also has an on off switch built right in so you can turn your projects on and off. There's even a little screw that goes in to the door to keep this closed and secure depending on how rigorously you're gonna be shaking your clue project. Next we have the Bonsai Buckaroo. Let's open this up and have a look. Now the Bonsai Buckaroo is a bolt-on add-on board for the clue. So they go together and we've included the necessary screws to attach these to each other. And that gives us a mechanical and an electrical connection. And what the Bonsai provides, we've designed this to be a plant watering kit. So we have attachments to connect to some of the pins that are available on the board. So you can do things like measure soil moisture. And then this has a little speaker buzzer on it so that we can make some sounds. And we have a three volt motor driver board that can be used to drive a pump. Speaking of a pump, we have this lovely little DC pump that can be used to move water from a container over to your plant. And we provided the PVC tubing that you need to do that. We also have some projects that will show you exactly how to build a little plant care robot. To go along with that type of project, we have a couple of alligator clip leads and some stainless steel nails that you can use as a soil moisture sensor. Speaking of plants, we have a little flexible starter plant pot for you to use. Now this may get a little bit wrinkled and squished during shipping, but it's okay. You can simply push it back out into shape and then fill that up with soil and you'll be able to get started. You can also use this as a liner inside of something else you'd like to use as a planter, such as a mug. Now you'll notice I dug something out of that planter when I got it out, and that is our fingerless glove. Now you can use this not only to look amazingly stylish, because come on, rock and roll, or cyberpunk, but you can use this to attach your clue for wearables projects. In fact, we have a project in the main guide that shows you how to build a musical instrument controller for synthesizers and software synthesizers that's wireless and sends MIDI controls based on motion as well as changing some of the elements on the screen with the interface of the clue. We also have a couple of strips of this really excellent double-sided foam adhesive tape, which is really useful for connecting things to other things in your projects, such as the clue to your glove or a pump to the base of a container where you're drawing water. And then lastly, we have a KN95 mask. And we decided to include this because in New York City, Adafruit has been donating these to anyone who needs one, and now we decided it would be nice to put one in the box as well, just to give you an extra bit of safety and precaution out there with COVID in the air. You want to be safe and distant, but you also want to stop the spread of airborne particles. Let's now take a closer look at the clue board itself. First thing I'm gonna do is peel off the little protective uh, screen cover here. You don't need that. Off we go. And now let's talk about some of the features of this terrific board. It is a 1.3 inch 240 by 240 pixel screen and it's beautiful. We'll take a look at it in action in a little bit. We've also got the A and B buttons here that are nice, satisfying, clicky buttons that we can use to enter 
things in menus and start and stop different functions in our code. You'll also notice that down at the bottom here, we have this typical micro bit style edge connector, which allows you to use uh, alligator clips to clip to the larger pads, as well as some accessories that you can plug into that use some of the smaller pads in between. And right out of the gate, this breaks out pins zero, one, and two, which are analog pins. And we can also use those as capacitive touch pads. And we also have a three volt and a ground line. And then a lot of other smaller ones there are used for additional pins that are on the chip. Speaking of the chip, we have the Nordic Semiconductor NRF52840 chip on board, and that has Bluetooth LE capabilities built right into it. So it serves as our processor and our wireless communications. Now, if you flip this back over, you'll also notice we have some sensors that are built right onto the top of the board there. And if you follow the little schematic diagram off to the side here, the silk screen says light, gesture proximity allows us to do highly accurate near distance proximity sensing, as well as there are a pair of uh, LEDs here that can illuminate something so that we can do uh, color sensing. So we'll, we'll show a demo of that in a moment, but we can reflect different colored lights off of an object and read that with the sensor. And it can even do some simple gesture detection like moving across in one direction or another. And now if we flip the board over, let's take a look at some of the connectors that we have. Here we have a Stemma QT connector that allows us to plug into other breakout sensor boards. We have the USB connector, which is used for power as well as data communications and programming the board. Here's the reset button. This is the three to six volt battery connector. And you can use LiPo batteries with that as well as the AAA and AA alkaline batteries or nickel cadmium batteries in different numbers. But a, a nice typical uh, setup here is to use the battery pack so that we can use three 1.5 volt AAAs. We also have a microphone on board, a magnetometer, a small buzzer speaker, gyroscope and accelerometer, a temperature sensor, humidity sensor, and pressure sensor. We also have this NeoPixel RGB LED built right into the back of the board, and we can use that for different kinds of color indicator uses. The board also has a whopping two megabytes of internal flash storage so that we can do things like data logging, or storing files to play back images and sounds. Quite a lot of bang for your buck packed into this lovely little board. Next, let's fire up the clue and take a look at some of the demo code that's running on it that will allow us to play around with some of the different sensors and plot them to the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up the batteries in our battery box and plug that in like so. Okay, so the first demo you'll see on here is a little bubble level. This allows you to see if a surface is true. And that's using the little built-in accelerometer, gyro, to give us some multiple degree of freedom sensor readings. Okay, now if I want to try a different sensor, I can just hit the A button. And now this is giving me the magnetometer readings. So we can use this to sense magnetic force. This is the gyroscope. Next up is the accelerometer. This is the microphone. So there's a little PDM microphone built onto there. And this is a pulse sensor. The way this works is it will measure the color of the reflected light from my finger 
and you'll see it's going to flash the lights there. Now it's holding those lights steady and after a moment when it clears that first spike, it'll normalize the graph out and we'll start to see bum 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 my heartbeat. Next up we have the proximity sensor. So this is the little, I'll use a little spudger here. That's really accurate proximity sensor that works just from a few centimeters out. But it's highly accurate. This is a color sensor. It's going to tell us what red, green, and blue color components are reflected back from those two lights. So if I, let's say, take a pair of scissors here that have green, it's going to tell us that the uh, largest component coming back is green. Here's a little red pen. And you can get these uh, values returned to you inside of your code, not just to plot data, but to react. So you could have different color objects cause different events. Next up we have a light sensor. So again, I'll use this to cover the sensor and you can see the light reading go up and down. This has a humidity sensor built on, so it's just simply measuring humidity in the air here. Here's a pressure sensor. Temperature sensor. It's hovering right around the center line here, so you can't see it too well. At about 32 degrees centigrade. And back to our bubble level. So those are just some of the cool things that you can do using the various sensors built right onto the clue. Now we'll have a look at how to connect the Bonsai Buckaroo plant controller board to our clue. The first thing you're going to do is remove the little Kapton stickers that are over these connectors. These are here just because of the manufacturing process. We use a pick and place machine that grabs and places these boards for soldering. And I like to just poke through them with some tweezers and then peel it off. You can also get a hobby knife or maybe even the edge of your fingernail on the side of that and lift. You'll see you have a little bolt-on kit that came in a bag and it has uh, six of these screws and six nuts. We don't actually need the nuts so you can set those aside and use them for some other project. And now all we'll do is connect up these screws to the board like so. And what this is going to do is make a direct electrical and mechanical connection between pins 0, 1, 2, 3 volt and ground onto the board. And if you take a look at the silk screen and the traces on the board, what you'll see is that pin 0 is an analog out and that's going to be used to drive this speaker. Pin 1 is routed to this center connector here so we can attach an alligator clip to that and use it to monitor our plant moisture. Uh, the 3 volt runs both to our motor driver and to this 3 volt pad and the ground runs to the motor driver and this ground pad. So now to connect these up all we're going to do is place the boards like so and take a screwdriver and screw these in. And You want to get a nice solid connection in there. You don't need to Screw down with all of the force you can muster. But you can go ahead and give it a nice solid connection so they stay electrically connected. A little extra twist there. And so there you go. The Bonsai Buckaroo is now connected solidly to your clue board. 
To continue the build of the bonsai buckaroo, what we'll do next is add the alligator clips and nails, the motor pump with its wiring to the driver board, as well as the tubing so that we'll be able to then try out the plant watering bot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the motor and you'll see that our motor here has a pair of wires that are already tinned and have a little bit of insulation trimmed from them so they should stay together pretty nicely. And what we're gonna do is take the red wire and insert it into the terminal connector at the top here and the black wire at the bottom. Now, if you got these reversed, no harm with these motors. These actually can go in either direction. You can control that from software. Uh, but just so you know, the positive is on top and ground is on the bottom. Now, the way this little terminal connector works, you press down on it with a tool, a little screwdriver will do. I'm using a little poking tool here. And this opens up a small uh, little gripper, metal gripper conductive inside. So it's spring loaded, that'll open it, we'll put in the wire and then release and that'll grab onto it. So what I'll do is prep these like so and I'll put them both in. We should be able to press the top one down and I'll feel that one get gripped in there and then the bottom one. And if you feel it move a little bit, it should be in far enough to get gripped. And if you give those a little tug now, you should feel a nice strong connection with those. Okay, the next thing we'll do is take a couple of wires here, a couple of our alligator clips, simply connect those up to the pin one connection and we'll use the three volt connection. Pay no mind that that's a black wire. And the other ends of these, you can connect up to your nails in order to put those down into the soil. Uh, you can also connect them to each other at first just to test out that when there is little or no resistance, which is what's gonna happen when the soil is moist, that the pump doesn't run. But for now, I'll go ahead and just connect these up to the nails so that can be set inside of your soil. And then for the tubing, what you can do is take the tubing here that we've supplied and you'll see that this is actually a submersible pump. So you'll only need one length of tubing. I don't need it to be this long. I'll go ahead and cut a little piece of that off with some scissors, something like this. And this is going to be the tubing that goes from the pump to your plant. So we'll go ahead and push that onto this little press fit connector here. And once you get that, it might need to stretch a little bit to get on there. Once you get that in place, it's not going anywhere. Uh, and then the way that this pump draws in the water is by being submersed in water, it will, when it runs, pull water through this little impeller vein here and then up and through the tubing. Okay, and we can actually try it out right now. It won't hurt anything to try it without water. So let's just go ahead and test this. Uh, I've gone ahead and put software on here that we have a very simple guide in the Bonsai Buckaroo uh, Learn Guide on Adafruit that shows you how to set up for using CircuitPython and which libraries and code you'll need on there. And once you have that all set, what we'll do is I'm gonna hold these two nails together so that there's essentially no resistance. And I'll turn that on. And you'll see it says clue plant, soil, 99%. So it's saying we're, we're essentially at zero resistance and the motor is off. That's what it reads there. And then when I separate these from each other, you'll see that it's now saying it's essentially zero uh, connection between those. So it's entirely dry soil in its mind. That's what the clue's thinking. And so it starts running that motor for a second on and off to pump little uh, squirts of water onto the soil. Then eventually, as that gets moister, it will reach a threshold where it no longer tries to deliver fresh, delicious water to the plant. Let's have a look at a little demonstration of how you can set up your plant watering bot. 
So first of all, I've placed some soil in our little uh, pot or liner here, and I've placed it on a little dish just to catch any overflow of water in case I get too aggressive with the watering. And next, we're gonna pick a vessel to hold the pump in the water. I'm just picking something a little large here for demonstration purposes, but you can pick something pretty small so long as it'll fit this pump in it. And what you'll do is place the pump inside of the vessel, like so. So it is gonna have its little uh, water entry point submerged in the water. And then what we'll do is we'll place the uh, hose, which we placed onto the pump, right onto the pot there so that the water will flow across the way. And you can tune this, uh, adjust the, the length of it if it's too long. In fact, I think mine probably is. Let's go ahead and cut that a little shorter. Uh, and it might be something you'll do in stages so you don't get it too short. Okay, something like that. We just don't want to have the water having to travel too far up and over before it goes into the pot. Okay, and set that right in there like that. Uh, and now we'll place the two nails inside of the soil as well. And what you'll want to do is have a consistent distance between these so you can get used to uh, the resistance level of the water in your uh, soil for a given plant. So I'll place these two about an uh, inch apart right now. And uh, since I don't have any seeds in here or anything to grow, I'm going to just put a little decorative fake flower in there. Uh, this is some really, really dry soil, and partly I did that so that we can see it operate for sure the first time it fires up. But eventually you shouldn't see this uh, watering very frequently or it's going to overwater. And now I'll go ahead and pour some water into the container that has the motor. And now I'll go ahead and turn on the battery pack. And it should right away sense that it's dry. So you can see it went ahead and squirted some water on and now that got saturated enough that it only needed that one pump of water. If I place the nails somewhere else, you'll see that it went ahead and added a little more water just because it noticed that there was a distance between them. Uh, so at this point, it's done and you shouldn't see that pumping very frequently, but now as it dries out over the course of a day or two, it will go ahead and refill the water for you. And so that is our little bonsai buckaroo and clue plant watering bot in action. Without a doubt, one of the more mysterious items in this Ada box is the fingerless glove. Now you can simply wear this to look incredibly stylish and there's no question about that working very well. But the other thing you can do is use it as a wearable device with the clue. So for this project, what I've got is a MIDI controller, which controls a synthesizer based on gestures. This is really cool because this uses some of the features on the clue, such as the accelerometer and gyroscope, as well as the Bluetooth low energy or BLE MIDI mode that it has. Let's take a look, first of all, at how you can attach this to the glove. For some projects, you might want to sew it or use something like Velcro. For a simple one like this, I'm just going to use some of this double stick foam tape. And I'll simply place that along the back of the glove, like so. And then remove this backing, like so. And then I can place the clue right onto that piece of double stick foam tape. Now this isn't gonna be permanent, but with the battery pack either held in your hand or placed inside the glove like this, the clue is lightweight enough that it's not going anywhere even as you control your musical instrument with it. Now let's take a look at how this actually works as a MIDI controller. We have a full project learn guide about this that you can go and check out. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this on and you'll see that when this loads up, it says it's a MIDI clue and it has three channels of controls, essentially virtual knobs that it can turn. Uh, and it's waiting for a connection to a Bluetooth device. 
So what I'm gonna do is use a virtual synthesizer on an iPad. Here I've got the Mini Moog Model D. And I have a little speaker hooked up here so you can hear it nice and loud. And now what I'll do is connect the device to Bluetooth using something called MIDI Wrench. This makes a sort of virtual MIDI port connection. And now, as I move my hand, the accelerometer in a couple of axes is sending virtual knob turns. And I can also see that if we turn on our effects, the delay line is one of those, as well as resonance. And if I play this keyboard now, You can see that's one simple example of adjusting one of those knobs just through gestural performance. Now what I'll do is I'll set an arpeggio playing over here so that I can concentrate on this. I'm not very good at doing two things at once, but some performers might find that they can play an instrument and do their gesture controls. Uh, and then once that's playing, I will adjust some of the tones that you hear and the delay based on motion. So you can see that one is just based on using the proximity sensor. You can also add in delay. Now one of the other things that we can do is use the touch sensors to change which bank of synthesizer sounds we're using. So these are sort of a preset. When I press this, we now switch to different controls. Totally different set. And you can also use the buttons to change which of these CCs you're adjusting to totally remap the control set. And so that's just one example of using some of the Bluetooth LE capabilities inside of CircuitPython on the Clue and a few of the sensors so that we can make a performance instrument out of it with our very cool fingerless glove. Let's do a little wrap up of what was in this wonderful Adabox 15. First and foremost, there is the Clue microcontroller board packed full of sensors. There is the Bonsai Buckaroo plant watering add-on. We have alligator clip leads and stainless steel nails to clip to the Bonsai Buckaroo and stick into some soil in your collapsible starter flower pot. We have the submersible three volt pump clear PVC tubing, some double stick foam tape, the fingerless glove, and the KN95 mask, as well as the battery box and three AAA batteries. Well, that concludes the unboxing portion of this unboxing evening. And I'm so excited for you to get started with your Adabox 15 and building some really cool projects with it. Again, I wanna thank DigiKey for making this possible. And I also wanna thank all of you around the world on behalf of Adafruit for your patience with us as we got this Adabox out under extraordinary circumstances. Now, I'm gonna show you in the live section some of the many, many excellent learn guides that we have that'll show you all sorts of different ways to use the clue and some of the things that came inside of Adabox 15. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park, and this has been the Adabox 15 Unboxing. Hey, all right. It's clue time, right? Hey, I'm sorry I forgot to get a, uh, a deer stalker cap because um, the only one I have around is this little Sherlock minifig. But um, we may have some, you may see some stuff in our social media about uh, some of our detective themed things with the clue. First of all, thank you so much for, for coming and uh, joining in on the fun. 
As you can tell, we're really excited about the Clue. I love this board, it's fantastic. It's become one of my go-to boards for projects because it's so capable with the Bluetooth it has, all the sensors, and the interface of having a little screen and buttons. It's amazing uh, the kinds of projects that you can do in such a small space now. You remember when this was like 14 things plugged into each other? Wow. Uh, and one other thing I, I wanted to mention before I forget, is if you didn't get the Adabox 15 in the mail, if you weren't able to subscribe, but you do want to get this box, we are going to have some in the store pretty soon. So we have some extra, some overflow, I believe. Uh, so those will be in the store. Just keep a, an eyeball peeled for that. Um, maybe a big giant magnified eyeball if you have to. Um, the, uh, the other small detail before I forget is that this PVC piping or PVC tubing has uh, a pretty strong plasticky smell. Uh, so when you get your box, if you open it up and you're wondering, "Woo, what is that?" That's what it is. Um, something else that I that I uh, wanted to mention is that uh, I don't know if this is an authorized use, but you can definitely uh, customize these masks with a little bit of gaffer's tape or some. Uh, Magic marker, maybe. I don't know if you want to breathe in magic marker, but just so people know that, you know, you're sporting a mustache even when you've got your mask on, then that's an option. Uh, let's see. Other things to mention. Uh, we have, uh, without a doubt, one of the richest learn guides for an Ada box ever. We had the chance to do so many extra projects just because of the time. You know how the time frame was with our... Um, uh, the pandemic and shipping and getting parts and all these things, people uh, taking care of themselves and, and working from home. There was a lot of factors, so we had time. Uh, and so we came up with a whole lot of guides for this, uh, a lot of projects you can do. So I wanted to share uh, with you some of those. So let's, um, let's have a look now in our, how about, I can pop over here, and uh, maybe that's a good background for that. There we go. All right, so uh, if you go to adabox, uh, learn.adafruit.com slash adabox15, or just go to the Learn site, you'll see uh, our guides there. This is the main uh, adabox15 guide, and it has a, an intro page, and then uh, it goes into a uh, unboxing, a, a sort of mimics the unboxing we just did, and we'll put that, this full video up there uh, at some point as well. Uh, but this goes through and gives you a nice description of some of the parts, um, the overview version of this. But then if you want to dive into details, boy, have we got them. So this is the clue guide, and the clue guide has loads and loads of details about all of the um, features of the board, including lots of info on all of the different sensors, which is terrific. Uh, we also have a uh, guide specifically on the Bonsai Buckaroo. Um, and uh, if you're wondering uh, about that watermelon and why it's there, we'll tell you later. Um, hat tip to Phil B. Thank you, Phil. Uh, the uh, first project that we have up for, okay, what can I do with this besides the, the excellent demo code, uh, which allows you to plot things. And I think Kevin Walters and uh, 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 Lady Ada did a lot of work to make this plotting work pretty, pretty straightforward inside of CircuitPython. Um, I think that demo may be a, uh, a packaged up one in, in Arduino just so that it's easier for us to put it on the boards. But you can do a lot of that with... Um, different libraries that we've written for CircuitPython to make things easy, including reading all of those um, uh, sensors and writing to the screen. One of this, this, this one here by Katni is uh, kind of an extension of our Pi Badger uh, library that allows you to really easily make a conference badge that's customizable. So you can see uh, here there's a great code explainer. Uh, and that software does things like generates a QR code based on a URL that you enter. So you can use this like a business card at uh, conferences. Um, and then there's uh, sort of the hello my name is section of it, as well as customizing things like colors and so on. Um, there's a, I'll show you later, there's actually a badge uh, holder uh, that the Ruiz brothers made that's a 3D printed case that's really excellent. Uh, this is a uh, sort of extended version of the plant watering robot. This is a remix of a project I did a few years ago 
Um, and back then it was using, I think, the Motor uh, Shield, the Adafruit Motor Shield version one uh, and a Arduino uh, to water a, a flower on this cute 3D printed robot. So you can go to that guide and check it out, download the um, models to 3D print your own and build this cute robot named Chauncey. Uh, we also did some science experiments because this is a sensor packed board. So you can do a lot of uh, very cool classroom or at home classroom learning uh, using the clue. Uh, thanks to the accelerometer and uh, gyro, we can do a fairly classic egg drop experiment and see how many G's we can withstand before we would break an egg and then correlate that to a real egg. I ended up with uh, my most, uh, I think my greatest success were lots of balloons and this suspension system. And that suspension system you actually can build inside of the, the outer packaging, the white box that uh, the Ada box came in. So go check that out. Uh, this is Kevin Walter's uh, Clue Sensor Plotter Guide, and this goes into excellent detail, really thorough guide about how all of the different types of sensors work, uh, what you can measure with them, uh, things like uh, barometric pressure, you can measure, uh, I, th I think in, in one of the demos there's a um, elevator used to, to see the changing uh, barometric pressure as the clue goes up and down. Um, there's a, a couple of no-touch hand timer projects that I built right at the beginning of the quarantine on the request of my daughter. So one of them uses the clue and allows you to uh, pass your hand in front of the infrared proximity sensor so it knows that it's time to start the countdown and then gives you some cute graphics while you wash your hands and counts it down. Uh, Carter Nelson has this guide, which is a uh, clue aging caster, which allows you to shake it and uh, sort of uh, uh, see one of the ideograms from the Book of Change show up, which you can use, or a hexagram rather, to um, consult the I Ching about your life and your future, I think. Uh, this is a, uh, another project I built that was a request of my daughter, which is a metronome. Uh, so I've built a little metronome as well as this little 3D printed stand, which is a remix of a Ruiz Brothers case. Uh, you saw the Clue uh, BLE MIDI glove project uh, that I showed during the video there. Uh, this is a really cool one that Liz Clark built, uh, which is a step counter. So you can get in your steps and no need to get a commercially available uh, step counting gizmo when you can have a very stylish open source one. Uh, the uh, BLE capabilities, Blue, Flute, Blue Fruit Low Energy, easy for you to say, uh, capabilities of the NRF52840 chip made uh, it possible along with a whole slew of great libraries that Dan Halbert and uh, a lot of other people in the CircuitPython team and community created that make it very straightforward to communicate with uh, BLE devices. So we've got uh, here an example of using the CircuitPython uh, uh, BLE advertising beacons on the Clue so you can do things like um, museum tours where someone's using an app that can tell when you get near a beacon and then look up a URL. Uh, we also have a dice roller project here, Davis Dell's created, so you can uh, roll any kind of dice that you can imagine. Uh, Kevin made a clue metal detector. Uh, we have, uh, along with some of those other, I mentioned uh, Blue Fruit Low Energy or Bluetooth Low Energy projects. Uh, we have a lot of gizmos out there that want to talk to phone apps or uh, little um, displays, but we can sort of consolidate a lot of that onto the clue. So we have things like um, multiple temperature sensor, barbecue uh, thermometers. Um, here's a project that Ann Barella made, which is a uh, remix of a NeoPixel purse that now has a display, uh, the bright wearables purse, thanks to the clue in there. Uh, here is a project about using BLE to send sensor data to a uh, sort of centralized Wi-Fi station, which can then um, uh, put all of your sensor data onto Adafruit I.O. or another I.O. platform. Uh, I built this little yoga pose timer here, which uh, uses the clue and gives us uh, some graphics of which pose, which yoga pose we should uh, assume. And then uh, when you tell it you're ready, you wave your hand and it has a little solenoid that clicks against a, a chime here, a little yoga bowl uh, that I have. Oh, that it won't ding like that, but go check out the video for that in the guide. It's lovely, I promise. 
we also have a light painting project, an update of uh, a uh, Phil B paint your dragon light painting device that uses the clue to uh, send, send a series of um, columns sort of the pixel columns of images so that you can do long exposure photography and move a wand. Uh, and hey, look, it's a werewolf. Uh, this is a, a gorgeous project uh, that Aaron created to uh, visualize the weather using sensing on the clue as well as um, this beautiful moss garden and neopixels to color things depending on the weather. Uh, I built a fun uh, sort of communications history anachronism type of project using a uh, teletype uh, TTY device and the clue's ability to send out um, uh, sounds at the pro appropriate timing to send signals over, over the phone lines to other devices. Uh, and this was a case where I was able to use the little Stemma QT connector to plug into an external device. I also... Um, really uh, love the fact that the clue fits into the different um, micro bit add-ons. So this is a Pimeroni uh, noise bit, which is a nice amplifier and speaker, and you can just fit that edge connector down into there and um, plug that in. And it'll work with most uh, of these devices since the pinout is roughly the same or almost identical. Uh, let's see. We also have uh, a couple of different of these Bluetooth uh, sensing projects that use uh, bicycle and heart rate monitors. So cadence, uh, speedometer, uh, heart rate monitors you can strap to your wrist or your chest. We can read all of that and then plot that data. Um, this is a um, sort of a simple version. And we also have the Piloton project, which is very advanced. And I think even uh, does uh, controlling your songs on your uh, iOS device using Bluetooth. So. Uh, it's a, a really feature-packed bicycling computer. Uh, sorry, I'm not remembering exactly all the features. That was a while ago. It's been a while, right? Uh, and then we have a couple of, of course, excellent 3D printable clue cases by the Ruiz brothers. Here's a wearable one that you can put on a lanyard. And uh, this is the sort of standard case, the slim clue case uh, that uh, doesn't have space for the battery behind, but allows you to still access the connectors. Um, and so, whew, that is, uh, that is the tour of the uh, many, many possible uh, projects that you can do right out of the gate. Uh, most of those are using just, just uh, items that you'll find here. Some of them have add-ons as you get more advanced. But if you just got your AdaBox, uh, you've got plenty of projects out ahead of you and, and a lot of fun building, I think, uh, to come. Of course, we always want to see the projects that you build. Uh, so if you do some cool stuff with your clue, please come on to the show and tell uh, and show us what you've made. Uh, we do show and tells a few times a week, but the big one is Wednesday evenings. In fact, it just happened right before this unboxing. Uh, so, so bring on your stuff, show things off, uh, join our Discord. It's a really terrific community for sharing and asking questions. It's a safe place. It's a well-moderated place. It's a friendly community, which uh, we really appreciate in these times, people supporting each other and, and helping lift each other up. Uh, so come on, come on over to, uh, to the Discord if you're not there already, and it's a good place to Talk about your Clue projects, learn CircuitPython, figure out new stuff, show off things. Come on over. Uh, let's see. What am I forgetting? Uh, once again, I do want to thank DigiKey. They have been amazing uh, partners uh, during all of these trying times and the good times before and hopefully the good smooth times uh, that we can look forward to one day. Uh, and uh, they... Continued shipping throughout. We had to stop shipping at one point, but they were able to step in and help uh, make it really easy for people who visited Adafruit's site to uh, hit buy on DigiKey, and it would it would uh, go and, and uh, allow them to buy their their uh, items over there. Um, and let's see, what else am I forgetting? Oh yeah, you know what? Some people will have mentioned they got two gloves in their. Um, Ada box, and, and that may be all of them, I'm not sure, but if you didn't, it's okay. The intention was only to have one. If you have two, then oh my gosh, uh, watch out, Madonna, because here you come with two fingerless gloves. Maybe you need some jelly bracelets too. Uh, let's see. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but this has been um, a really fun one. Thank you uh, for your support in it. I'm glad we were able to get this Ada box out. Everyone worked so hard, so thank you for everyone. 
uh, all over who worked so hard to get this Ada box out. Um, we're, we would have been sad if we hadn't done it because it's a, a really fun one. Uh, we worked hard and we're glad it's in your hands now or should be there very soon. I believe shipping has been going uh, nonstop for days and days. So hopefully uh, if, you, if you are a subscriber, you've gotten yours by now, but if not, it should be soon. Um, and I will also mention that you don't want to forget to sign up for Adabox 16 uh, because we're going to, we're already working on that one. Uh, it, it never stops around here. So, so we're working on Adabox 16. It's going to be a very cool one. Lots of great stuff in it. Um, so go and subscribe uh, if you haven't already. And I believe that's going to wrap it up. So I'm going to be hanging out in the Discord chat. In fact, uh, hello everyone there. I've been I've been uh, keeping one eyeball over on the Adafruit, on the uh, Discord, the Adafruit Discord uh, chat, and um, I'll be hanging out there. Lady Ada's there, Mr. Lady Ada. I've seen uh, I think Scott. I've seen some of our other uh, gang, George Graves. Uh, lots of good people hanging out there, Jeff. So if you have questions, uh, if you want to just chat, if you're just excited and you want to show a picture of your, your Ada box that you got, do it. Show me, show me what you got because uh, this, is, uh, this is what we're here for. We're very excited about it. Uh, okay, well, thank you. With that, I'm going to wrap it up and uh, I will see you next time around for Adafruit Industries. I'm John Park and this has been the Ada Box 15 unboxing. Good night, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.